Okay, we're gonna do a few of these, and what I wanna do is just see what answers we have. See if we agree or if we don't. So what answers have we got? Six. Six. Other answers. Nine. 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 Seven. Seven. Six. One. Yeah. 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 Seven. Okay, well seven is seven. Check mark, we have a check mark here. Check mark here. It's two sevens. Oh, okay. Two sevens. You got one as well. I got nine. I got nine. Two for nine. Two for nine. Nine. Two for nine. Three for nine. Three. How'd you guys do one? All right. Let's do. The floor is closed. Let's go on to the next one. It's not a date. Six divided by three divided by three. One point one. 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 Yes. One and a half. One point five. No, I'm just one. Wow. One. One? One. One. Yeah, one. 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 That's why I got one. One. I got one, dude. One, my lord. Wait, 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 wait. That one's one. I got point six. Point six? Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. We're talking floors closed again? I don't know. Oh, wow. All right. Now this problem in particular, I came across uh, like five years ago or so on the internet. There was a, a guy on YouTube that I, I watch, uh, his math tutorials, and he just posed the question and then said to leave your explanation in the comments. And within a matter of just a few hours, there were hundreds and hundreds of comments filled with expletives and hurt feelings and yelling and screaming and I'm right, you're wrong. And it was really, really rough. I thought it was really funny. Because I looked at it and I said, it's clearly this answer. I can't understand what the problem is. And then I realized that uh, it's just a, when we ask what's the right answer and the wrong answer, that's almost the wrong question, okay? Let's go back through these. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna add a little bit to it. I'm gonna give you a couple pieces of advice. I'm gonna see if we come up with, everybody gets the same answer. But you really have to listen to these other pieces of advice. Um, get out a piece of paper. Don't just do it on your calculators, especially those longer ones. I just not show you. I Make sure you have a piece of paper. Uh, piece of paper. Make sure you write it down. Make sure you do it. Make sure you use the back of the one. Whatever you like. It's yours. You know, you're holding on to you. Okay. So we're going to go back to the first one. And I'm just going to put some more on there. And then we'll see if our answers are more uh, the same. And this other thing is just take it slow. One thing at a time, or if you, do two, if you start doing multiple steps at once, make sure you are 100% confident that you're not making any simple or arithmetic errors, okay? Like, let's not do one plus two is two, or two times three is five. Like, make sure you don't make those little mistakes, all right? Make sure every time you put two numbers together, it's correct. So the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take six divided by two, and wow. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but all right. So I'm going to put parentheses around there. It's nine. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for this one. It's freaking nine. It's one. It's nine. Let's write it down. Write it down. I did write it down. Show me where. Right here. I I know what I did wrong. Oh, 
What I'm saying is, like, you did it as if there were parentheses in the award of the fucking you do it. You did it the way you did it. It's interesting, some of the things that I'm hearing is the same kind of things I saw in the comments of that YouTube video. Uh, it's supposed to be, this is right, this is wrong, this is what I, this, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be. Those are the kinds of things that I want to talk about. So, here, let's do this together. What should I do? Well, I should go to the parentheses and do whatever's in there, right? So, four times five. Twenty. Twenty. Okay, well, plus. Well, here's parentheses, which is two numbers in it. I can do that right now, right? Three. Plus two is three. Okay, this is plus three. That's still inside these parentheses, right? And that's inside this parentheses. I could do. There's just two numbers in this parentheses. I could do that. Eight divided by three is eighteen divided by three is six. All right, now I've got a new problem with. I'm still bringing the parentheses along as long as I have it. Done what's in the parentheses. That's weird. I got both in the Is it like 23 and 20? Well, we should uh, standardize this so everybody would get the same result. We're working on standardizing it. So now I've got 3 plus 3, 6. Okay, that is what that combination of numbers is. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 20. Yeah. Okay, that's inside of parentheses. Minus 6. Six minus six. Twenty. Twenty. Again, I don't want you to think right or wrong answer. I'm going to give you more in a minute. All right. Now I'm going to put parentheses again. Here. 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 Uh, next here. And then the last thing is minus seven, but then put parentheses around the whole thing would be kind of uh, overkill. The thing about putting parentheses around stuff is it naturally Changes the groups order. things together, right? And it, it does establish an order in which we'd have to do it to kind of like break these things out of the parentheses and let them interact with other numbers. If I put parentheses around everything, that order should be undebatable, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody would have to do it in the same order, or do you disagree? So if I put parentheses around this four squared, and I'm just kind of zoom in on the, the smallest things possible, four squared, 16, right? And then there's times three, and that's in parentheses together, right? Those parentheses kind of plus. Okay, 15 divided by five, that's in parentheses, naturally. Put that together. Right. Three times a three. Times three. Right. There's a minus seven. These are in parentheses together. Right. There's that parentheses. Three times sixteen. Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah. Sorry. Three times three. All right. Minus seven. Now I clearly the forty-eight plus nine are in parentheses. I'm trying to tell you to add those two things together, so we get fifty-seven. Minus seven. <laughs> so this time we got. Nobody got fifty. I got fifty. Oh, you did. I got just 50. now. Oh, just, just now. But it was before you did. Yeah, I got fifty actually. I was. I had but fifty. But I have the same number. The first answer was fifty-two. Your first answer was fifty-two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I revised it. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Now this one, the one that caused controversy across the internet, right? We're, gonna, we're not going to discover what the right answer is. We're just going to decide what order to do it in. The order that I'm going to make you do it in is this order. It's still the same one. Yeah. It's the 
in it in that answer. order in the first place, of course you get the same answer. It's <laughs> not change anything for you. But for anybody that did it in any other order, it's still your question. Well, okay. well, let's do it in the, in the order that I've shown you here. 48 divided by 2. Clearly, I want those numbers to group together to be 48 divided by 2. 24 12. times. 12. Now, I could do 12. Or it sounds like Shelby's saying leave it 9 plus 3. Distribute. No. Nope. No, that's not a Not saying that. No. That was before you had the distributive. Like, uh, before you had the parentheses. Oh, before I had the parentheses. I, I see. Okay. Right. And that's a question of what you ordered to be. Yes. To and that's, that comes out to 80. Yes. Okay. Now, it's not about what's right, what's wrong. So I want you to stop thinking in those terms. It's, it's about what order we do it in. Now, why? Let's say we didn't have some, some PEMDAS or GMA or whatever acronym you learned. Okay, what if we didn't have it? Anything like that that says do this first and this first, do multiplication, and addition, and do these exponents first, or whatever. What if we didn't have that? How, how would you know what order to do things in? I would go with like the biggest What's that? I don't know. What was that? I would go from left to right. We wouldn't. Okay, so now we're just kind of <laughs> picking, right? If there's no agreed order, if I don't tell you what order to do it in, it's just chaos. It's the Wild West. We're just doing whatever, whenever we want. Right? Unless I make it clear with a bunch of parentheses. Okay? So, right, so I tell you what to do, but until I do tell you that, it would be hard to know what you're supposed to do first. Okay? Now, well, then why don't all problems look like this? Why doesn't everything have parentheses around every pair of numbers? It's a lot of extra time, and ink, or graphite, or whatever. Okay. It just, it's more effort to put all those parentheses around every pair of numbers that you want to have go together. Okay. So, instead of putting parentheses around everything, we agree to, we agree to an order. Here's the order that we're going to do it. Is there a right order? Yes. Okay. But there's not an order like two times three is six, right? It just is six. It can't be anything else. This order thing, though, is kind of up in the air. Which order should it be in? We can kind of argue about it until we establish an order. We say this is it. Right? Now, again, it's not quite the right order. It's just the order that we said we're going to use. Right? So I've just seen a lot of people get oof, so upset about what's the right answer or the wrong answer. Two eighty-eight or two right for this one. This. Which one is not this one? The other one that we did. Not this one. This one. Right? 288 or 2, which is the right answer. People get really heated over it. There's only one right answer if there has to be a certain order. Okay? We're going to agree on an order, and we're going to establish what that order is today. And we'll follow that order in this class, and you'll find most mathematicians follow this the same order. Okay? Are we ready? All right. So I like, I like PEMDAS. It's fine. When you write it like this, the order that I want you to follow is not as clear as it could be. The way you read it here, you could take it to mean multiplication is first, so it's always first, and then division always comes next. All right? Now, worldwide you'll find that's not the way people do it. Okay? That's not wrong, it's just not the way most people do it. We're going to do it the way most people do it, So, because why, why wouldn't we? Right? Not doing it in that order that everybody worldwide does it would be like making up a new ruler with made up units that nobody else uses. Centimeter. Which is kind of like what we do in America with feet and inches, because everybody else uses the metric system. But at least they know about it. But if I just take out a, a stick and I, I just make these marks, it, at regular intervals and call them canaries, right? Like, oh, that, I drove 17,000 canaries. How hard is that? You got an arm. No idea. You got an arm there. Unless canaries are this long. Yeah, then you got a really weak arm. 
Okay, so we don't know how long canaries are. We have to have some things established and agreed upon worldwide. And worldwide. It's more like this. So this makes it a little more clear that we actually do it in the way that you were describing. Yeah. Right? That it is parentheses, it's even silly that parentheses is even in the list. If I see parentheses, of course I'm going to do it in the parentheses. Why would I ignore it? But anyway, parentheses or grouping symbols. So this is how grouping is. symbols are like square roots, uh, even different kinds of parentheses, brackets. What else is a grouping symbol? A line that's like in a fraction, right? That groups things together. Um, I don't know. Those are a few that I can think of off the top of my head. Do you have any other grouping symbol examples? So those are some grouping symbols. But I mean, there might as well be parentheses around all that stuff, right? It's all together. Anyway, parentheses, it's kind of a silly thing, but it's there. Exponents, first. We need to agree that exponents are first. Otherwise, 2 times 3 squared. I do first, the multiplication of the exponent. Is it 6 squared or is it 9 times 2? According to the order that we're all going to agree to that's used most worldwide, it would be 9 first and times 2. So let's all agree to do that. Agree to do that first and then multiply by 2. Okay. Now multiplication and division, they're the same. Okay, they're on the same level. Do multiplication and division with the same priority just from left to right. So if I do from left to right, I would not multiply this 2 by this stuff because it is, it is grouped together with 48 divided by 2. Okay, so we would do that first because multiplication and division from left to right. Okay. Is that the right way? It's just the way that we agreed to do it. Can we all agree? Can we just like universally just kumbaya and sit around a campfire and say we all agree to do it in this order? Yes. No. Is that the way we're doing it then? Yes. Yeah. That's the order okay. that I'm going to, that's what I'm trying to communicate to you by putting this division on the left and saying do it first and then do this multiplication. And then before that, add an item three. Uh, addition and subtraction would be next from left to right. People have less trouble with that. The thing that is really tough, um, people do a lot, is was it this one? Uh, was it the first one? First one. Uh, we, we went through this. This is not what we would get if we followed the order that we just agreed on. Okay, but. Put it well, said because the two's right next to the parentheses, some people will just immediately multiply those things together because right next to parentheses just kind of begs to be multiplied together. Right? But because division comes first, we would do that first, not like this, but like that. Divided by two is three, then multiply by. Divide by two, three times three is nine. So we haven't learned the right way. We've just agreed to do it one way. That everybody will do it that way. And we shouldn't come out with anything different unless we do like arithmetic errors and do six divided by two is two or something. That's it. We just established the order that we're going to use. Multiplication and division, probably the most common debated thing. Multiplication and division from left to right. No. Division comes first. You have three times row. All right. This is what we're going to do next. Let's look at this one to start with.
So just run this real quick. Your multiplication skills may be rusty, or maybe not. Maybe it's been a while since you've done this. So let's do it the way we normally do it. And we'll have no really explanation of why we're doing it. But then we'll clear that up. Do you want to go? Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. Everybody paying attention? Yes. Yeah, me asking you that question is not asking whether or not you want to pay attention. Two times five is ten. There's a zero there and a one there. Okay. You don't really have to know what's going on there. You just do two times five and do the carrying and not really think about it. 2 times 2 is 4, add that 1 in there, you get 5, right. 3 times 5 is 15, so you put a, well there is a 1 there, put a 1 in there, 3 times 2 is 6, add 1, 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, there's a 1 there, 7, 800, so what's the area of this rectangle? pretty much doing the same thing. There are some methods like this, this thing called the Egyptian method, which is pretty quickly, that is not the same thing. It's not the same steps as finding the answer, right? And here, here is what it is, essentially. Area is helpful because it helps us see what we're actually finding, okay? Along here we have 32 things, okay? Like inches or feet, let's call it, that would be easy to think of it that way, inches. Along here we have 25 inches, Okay. When we do 32 times 25, we find we have 800. What are those things? 800 what? Integers? No, not integers. Units? We find the areas. No, like value, mass. What's that? Density. Square. 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 Let's just call them squares. Square units. Okay. You don't even have to call them units. You can just say they are squares. Uh, Determined size. We don't know how big they are. Okay. But this multiplication method doesn't make it clear that's what you're doing. If you're finding 800 things, okay, you just find the answer is 800. When you look at it as area, it's kind of helpful. You see that there are 32 groups, right? I can put 32 lines like this, put 25 lines this way, and in this way I have 32. Columns of 25, okay, 32 25s. And in this way, I have 25 rows of 32 squares. Okay. And now you see it for what it is. It's 800 things. In this case, it's 800 squares, it could be 800 minutes, 800 miles, 800 whatever, depending on what these two things were to start with. Now I want to do this multiplication problem, but I want to do it as the area of bunch of rectangles. Okay. So, it was 54 times 48. What? 43. 43. You're going to do it over here. You're going to see that everything we do here is the same as what we're doing over here. Okay. So, but what, what we've done is taken this rectangle right here and exploded it out into four rectangles. Okay. I could have split this into any number of rectangles for any number of reasons. Why is this rectangle over here by itself? Why has it kind of been separated off the way that it's been separated off? It's, it's the fat big. one. It's big. It's the fat one. It's almost fat one. 
Well, look, there's two skinny ones. Yeah. Three skinny ones, basically. And then there's the big one. Those three have something in common. All of that one doesn't. No, no, they no, kicked no, them out of the group. No, I have it. I have it. They're all in the shape of a rectangle. These are all rectangles. No, they're in the shape of a rectangle. Put together. True. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, we took this rectangle essentially and split it into four rectangles. Now, I mean, let's look at this side. I could have split this anywhere, right? I could have had this be 47 and this be 7. Why didn't I do it that way? Is it 50 and 4? It wouldn't matter. Yeah. But we did do it in this way because are we are we helping each other? Yes. To learn math? Mm-hmm. Well, we were. We were just deciding what to What are those? What are what? It's a rectangle that we multiply. I could put all these back together and make one big rectangle. Wow. Right. But what I've done is I split it apart into four rectangles like this. Please stop talking. Please. The reason I've split it up the way that it is right now is because it kind of mirrors this process. It's more clear what's going on. So let's start with. Three times four. Three and four having something in common. Four. They're both ones. Right? This is how many ones this number has, and this is how many ones this number has. Oh, I get it. One's tens. Ones, tens, and hundreds. Okay. We're finding the ones here, right? One times one is one. Here we have a place value of ten and a place value of one. Ones ten. and tens. Four ones, four tens. So in here we'll find the tens. And here we'll have, well, also tens. And here we'll find hundreds. Okay. It's exactly what we do in that other algorithm, but in a way that we can actually see it as a collection of stuff. Squares, in this case. Yeah. Bunch of squares. Oh my God. you count those? Well, I counted like 50 and 40. OK, good. Um, so. <laughs> Let's start with this one and see how it's the same as what we do here. What's 3 times 4? 12. Okay. Well, that's what we did here. 4 times 3. I'm just going to put 12 right there. I don't have, do I have to carry the 1? No, it's in the right place. 12. All right, let's go on to here. Here's where we find a bunch of 10s. How many 10s do we have? 4 times 40? 160. Now. That's 160, but that's 16, what? Tens. Tens, 16 tens, right? How many tens? Well, that's what we're doing when we do four times four, right? Cover up that zero, I just do four times four, and I'm finding how many tens I have. Four times four is 16 tens, or 160. All right, three times five is 15, right? But that's ones. Ones times tens gives me tens. So. 15 tens or 150. And inside here, we have 5 tens times 4 tens. 20. 20 hundreds to that. Yeah. 20 add 2 zeros. Huh? 20 add 2 zeros. 20 add 2 zeros because we're if we have tens times tens, we're going to get hundreds. 5 times 4 is 20, that's 20. 20 hundreds. And all of that was going on in this other method as well. We were getting uh, 3 times 4 was 12. Then we're going to do this one next. So we did 40 times 4. We got 160, or 16 tens. Look over here, 3 ones, 5 tens, and 150. And last, we were over here with 5 tens times 4 tens gave us 20 tens. 
really too far to the left. 20, 10, 20 hundreds, not tens, 20 hundreds. And then we can add all these things together. But I have two ones. I have one ten, I have six tens, I have five tens. Twelve. Total of twelve tens. I could do this again, right? But I, let's just carry. Let's do the carry. That makes it a little faster. That's why we do that. So we have one ten, six tens, that's seven tens, plus five more tens. It's twelve tens. Okay. Well, that's two tens and one one hundred. So we'll just put the hundreds there. We got three one hundreds and two one thousands. If you did that on the previous page, you certainly got the right, the same answer as that, correctly. This method, sh it shows us that we're finding something. We're finding that many squares. Now, that was just a brief little explanation of that. That's cool. We kind of did that already with the stick method. It was very much the same. If I put five sticks here and four sticks here right, and three sticks here and four sticks there, pretty much have the same thing. We're counting intersections rather than squares in that case, but it's all pretty much the same. What I want to do with this area thing, though, is help you understand something else about multiplication. Actually, two things. But today, what I want to help you see, see in front of your eyes, fraction multiplication. Something else that this is going to help us with explain is Distribution, the distributed property. But today, just today, we're going to do fractions. We're going to see why fractions get multiplied away, fractions get multiplied. Okay. Looking at some of the tests briefly, I can see there's some confusion. There's when I'm asking multiply fractions, some are finding it's common denominators. Not necessary. Not wrong. More work than necessary. It's just not necessary to find common denominators. I see some. Um, Cross multiplying, not correct. Okay, I see some uh, cancellation that's not correct. Okay, and then some of you are multiplying straight across. Right, that is the way that you multiply fractions. I'm going to show you why that is. Before we can do that, though, we have to know what a fraction is saying, what it's communicating. So we have to know what both of these numbers communicate. Can anybody tell me what the 11 is saying? What it, 11 of what? Six. 11 units. 11 units? Of anything. Well, 11 of Just 11 things. Like 11 or something like that. Is what we're talking about. 11 students. 11 students? Uh, now, okay, we could view this as 6 divided by 11, and that, that's true. I want to look at it as the number 6 11 where 6 means something and 11 means something. Not 6 divided by 11, but 11. 6 11 is okay. A number that is less than 1, right? Slightly more than a half. That's a ratio, but we're kind of getting there. I, I, see, I see you guys on the road. Do the huh? rest. I said I'm on the road. Do the rest. You're on the road? I said that I'm on the road. Do the rest. You said I'm on the road. It is the total of what we're talking about. Total. Like the main idea. The denominator is the ideal capacity of whatever we're talking about. Okay. I think I see what you're saying. Yes. Let's try and put it in some concise language and then also show a picture of it. Okay. There's 11 things. Okay. When I, let's say I put all these 11 things together, what do I get? 17. No. I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about the 6 yet, I just want to talk about the, what the 11 means. Because in 6 11ths or 7 11ths or 8 11ths, the 11 means the same thing in all of them. Yeah, but what do you mean put it together and talk about? Just talk about 11. What does 11 mean? Denominator. The denominator means something. What does it mean? <laughs> what? What? Six elevens. What does the eleven mean? It's eleven out of six. So like this. Means six out of eleven. You know what? Jenna? You know what? Focus. 
feel we're very close. Continue to tell me. Close? Huh? Close? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm thinking that it was 11, now it's 6. Like, uh, like 50 out of 100. Except it's 11, not 6. Well, six, I think 6 out of 11. I think you mean what you should mean, or you're just kind of saying it backwards. Right? 6 out of 11. I told you. Yeah, we're talking about the 11. Okay, so. What does the 11 mean? In a fraction, in the number 6 elevenths, if there's 11 things, tell me about those 11 things. 11 of them. Okay, take 11 of these 11ths. Yeah. Okay, put them all together. No, just all 11 of them. And what do you get? If you put all the 11ths together. What do you mean? You get one. Yes. You get one of the whatever. Pizza, candy bar, Whatever it is. Okay? Cut it into eleven pieces. And eleven of those pieces of that size make up the one thing. Okay, let me show you a picture of eleven, of the eleven, not the six, just the eleven for now. Showing you what eleven is. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best here to make the right size. Have I shown you what the eleven means? No. 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 The space is in between and that. So, yeah, like, okay. here's the beginning, like zero, and all the way down here is one. Have no. I shown you what the 11 means? No. Inches. It doesn't have to be in inches. It's like a ruler. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, it looks like a ruler, but it's just, just marks. It doesn't have to be inches. Okay. Or any measurement. This, this thing can represent anything. Yeah. Represent pizza, represent a dollar. Yeah. It can represent what, like uh, lots of money, just like stacks and stacks of cash. And you just cut it up yeah. like this into 11 pieces. Okay. Uh, represent a piece of property that we cut into 11 pieces because there are 11 heirs to this <laughs> state or whatever. Okay. So. Have I shown you what, if I have shown you correctly that this is what the 11 means, how can you double check and make sure that I've done that correctly? You can't. Shaving. <laughs> no, just, extra just counting? Can we just count something? What? If it's out, it's, it's, a lot, it's 6 over 11. How just talking about 11. 11. Yeah, but that's what I'm confused on. There's 11 spaces right there. That yeah, but if it's... 11 pieces to get one hole. Yes. So why is there six? Yeah, I'm worried about the six yet. No. Six holes. Not yet. No six. Big 11. I'm going to show you six in just a second. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page that this 11 part means I've taken one thing, one thing, one line, one whatever, and put it into 11 pieces. So one piece right here, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11 pieces, so have I done it? Yeah. I've shown you what 11 look like, yes. right? I've shown you what this number means, all right? So let's say we call this number the size of, size of what? Pi. Size of pi? Size of the, the whole pi? Yeah, pi. Size of stick, because that's what's on the bottom. Size of the stick, the size of the stick is one. The size of the pizza is one. No. Oh, but it's in 11 notches. Big pie. Okay, so it's can we call it the size of the pieces? Yeah. Of the pie. Okay, of whatever. Of the pie. Mm -hmm. A large of the pie. Pieces of the whole. Oh. Oh. I'm going to be really wordy about it. Okay. The size of the pieces of the whole thing. The whole pizza, the whole lime, the whole pie. Pie, whatever. The size. So that's how big they are. I challenge you to think in another way, and kind of turn around backwards. Uh, what size are these pieces? What are they? 
It's one of those things in math where you're going to have to say a bunch of general words that you can't get too specific because we don't know what this is one of, we don't know a lot of things. So how can we say what size these pieces are? How do we say what size these pieces are? Huh? Out of 11? Okay, so. I mean, you want me to put like inches? It's just 25. I don't know. How about we take all of them? If we took all of them, right? They are such a size that if I took all of them, I would get what? 11. One. One. We get one thing. One pie, right? Yeah, pie. One pizza, one dollar, one whatever. Now. <laughs> The, the bottom number here, the denominator, is telling me what size pieces I'm working with. What does the six tell me? How, much? Yes. Oh, How many pieces do you have? That's this is how many pieces make up the whole. This is how many of those little pieces you have. So uh, how can I show you six elevens? I can just shade it or in some way indicate six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six of those pieces, where a lot of those pieces make the whole thing. Uh -huh. Six of them. All right, let's see if this is sunk in. Can someone come up and show us what four fifths looks like with this line? Shall we? Yeah, with this line. With that line? Just change your marks inside. You can do the same thing, just change where the marks are. Mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. so I got something on you that one. Hey, Everett, we should be hearing silence and the sound of a pen on a smartphone. Is that four fifths? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because five means what? Out of four. What? Five does not mean out of four. Oh, there's five, five means. There's five things. Almost. Five things. Almost five things. In the whole thing. Yeah. Five parts of the whole. <laughs> Can I do that? Yeah. Rainy. Rainy wants to do that. So what's your own and half. Good. So we draw a pie. You have to use what? Alright, Ramy is doing Ramy's thing. We should all be watching. Do we have eights? Just double check Ramy's work here. Shelby and Ramey have done. Wait. Okay. I'm going to talk about these three eighths. Not that it makes that much of a difference. No, it was great. It was just on the side that I didn't want to use. I want to use the right side. Quiet! You do not need to answer that question. Turn the feet this way. No, this way. Get them in the desk. <laughs> Right? <laughs> That's friendly. Keep them there. Um, okay, then what I'm 
going to do, just so that the next part of this is a little more fluid, I'm just going to kind of roll, take it down to the hash marks. I know, I know. And I'm going to just group them like this. Is that three eighths? Yes, that is three eighths. Okay. I'm going to do the same to Shelby. No! This. You've been going like two minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this. respect for what we're trying to do. We're not trying to make everyone laugh. We're trying to learn about fractions. Okay? So we have three-eighths and four-fifths. We have five pieces in the hole. There's four of them that we have. It takes eight pieces to make the hole, and here we have three of those. All right, I'm going to take this, rotate it, and remove it because we want to match it up here. What is this? The it's sides right. of a rectangle. How do you do that? It's a graph. It's a rectangle pie. Wow. It's well, upside down. Well, it's, it's like the, It's kind of like a graph, but it's like not. You don't need to do a graph. So they're just <laughs> sides of a rectangle now. Yes. I don't want to be a rectangle. Amy. Hey. Jason. Hall. Everybody who's talking, please look up here. Please turn the I'm watching my hands. Why? No, I'm watching my hands of it. How long is this side of the rectangle? Five. One. Five. One. 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 Right? Because it's four fifths of one of the whole thing. Oh. From here to there is one, and four fifths is almost one, but not quite. Okay. All right. And how long is this side then? One. And this is one, and this is one. What's the area of this? One. One. Okay. This side's one, and this side's one. If I look right here, here, and I find the area of that rectangle, what will that tell me? One. What multiplication will that be the answer to? It will be. What is this? Four. Is this three? It's, mm -hmm. it's no. On top of the numerator will be twelve. What is this? Four. That's four. Oh. One, two, three. What? I see the purple line. I three see eights. another line on the very top. Of so. eights. Yeah. That's on. Right. One, two, two, three, three, four. One, <laughs> one, <laughs> oh. two, three, okay, okay. three. What? Oh. Oh. I was like, huh? oh, yeah, three eighths. Yes. And how much is this? Four fifths. Four. Quiet. One. Go sit. Back in the corner. Bye. You don't want to do that, but you will not stop being abstraction. So this is three eighths. This is four fifths. This is a rectangle. This is three eighths on one side, four fifths on the other. So the area of that should be whatever four fifths times three eighths is. Yeah. Whatever four fifths times three eighths is. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's draw that like those lines there. Kind of like back here, where we saw there's a grid, right? Like the number of those little squares in there is what the product of those two numbers is. We have to look at a couple of different things because there's two pieces of information in a fraction. So inside here is the area of this rectangle. The area of this rectangle is whatever four fifths times three eighths is. First, like let's 
look at this fraction, let's ask ourselves how many pieces there are. How many of these things are there? 40. How many of these things are there? Right inside this rectangle. count them, right? No. We know there's four in this row, and there's three, and there's three rows. I said three, I said three, 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 three. Okay, we can do that. Three, 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 three. Right? So three, six, nine, twelve. Okay. Or just four this way. Three this way. Four times three is twelve. Okay, so that is how many of these pieces we have. Right? Now in a fraction, which number tells you how many pieces you have? The numerator is how many? We have 12 things. We're all on the same page here? There's 12 of these things. Now we have to decide what are these things. Okay, let, let's look here. We have four. Four of what? Four of fifths, right? Four of these pieces, where five pieces make one. Okay. What's the area of this big, big square here? The area? All the way back to the beginning when I said this side is how long? One. And this side is? One. So the area is? One. one. Right? So all these pieces together, when I add them all up, these, these two dimensional things, they all add up to the area, which is one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, how big are these pieces? How big are these pieces? Well, we said like. One of 40? Yeah. This is one of 40 things. And all those 40 things together make. Four, four. One. <laughs> Make one thing. Okay. So we have 12 things. There they are. Okay. That's like the four things we have here, the three things we have there. We have 12 things. How big are they? 40. There are 40 in size. There are 40, 40 of these little pieces. Make one thing. Make one whole, well, in this case, a square. Okay. And if we look at just the multiplication problem of these two fractions, 4 fifths times 3 eighths. And we multiply 4 times 3, we have 12. Yes, we have 12 pieces. Okay, But now they're a different size than they were before. They're not eighths, they're not fifths. What are they? Well, however many you have when 5 makes up this whole and 8 makes up this whole. So 40, it takes 40, 5 times 8. And that's what we have here, 5 times 8. This whole takes five pieces, this whole takes eight pieces. Okay, so the whole they make together would be five by eight, 40 pieces. Yeah, is that I should be. Okay. Okay, so we have 12 of these things. These things are 40. So it takes 40 of them to make one thing. Okay? Now, something I noticed with my last class, just before you is that this can be written as, I can we simplify it. Simplify it as what? What would the simplified version of that be? Something. They're both divisible by four. Three tenths. Now take a look at what we can do with the picture of four-fifths times three-eighths. Okay. Notice what happens when I take four of those things and make them one rectangle. Okay. And I'll put uh, these four together and make one big rectangle. And I'll do the same here. I'll put these four together, like these four, and these four, these four, these four, these four, and these four. You notice how grouping them together in groups of four leaves nothing left over? So how many of these new things do I have? Let me draw back what I erased by accident. So how many pieces do I have in here, inside this rectangle? Four. Eight. Four. Eight. Two. Yeah. Almost. Three. three. I have one, two, three of them. 
right? Each one of them is made of the four fortieths that we had before. And how many make up the whole? Uh, we got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten make up the whole, and we have three of them. The stuff inside the box can be grouped together in groups of four. And in general, all the things inside the whole square can be grouped together by four. That's the same thing as these both being divisible by four. You see? Group them in groups of four, both inside the box and in the entire square. Um, I would like you to try square. Dimensions of the square, can you, from what we just did, can you guess what the dimensions of this square are? One. one by one. One by one. And show me um, five sixths times um, seven ninths. Show me that with this square. That hint I gave you, you don't have to draw the whole grid. See what I mean there? All I really need to know is inside this new space, how many pieces do I have? And what else do I need to know? You have 15 pieces. Right? You have 15 pieces? Yeah. Let's see. There's one here. One. Okay. We'll show this to be five six. Okay. <coughs> Cut it into six pieces. All right. I know that's six because six of them make the one thing. I have five of them. All right. So that's five sixths. That represents five sixths. Along here, I'll show you nine. Okay. I'll cut it into nine pieces, into ninths. Now I'll show you that I have how many of those knights? How many knights do we have? Seven. Seven of them, okay? So we have seven of the nine. <coughs> All right. So the multiplication of five sixths by seven knights should be equal to the area of this rectangle right here. Remember what we talked about two slides ago? What do these numbers mean? 11 pieces make a whole. That's how big they are. And this is telling you how many of those size pieces you have. You have six of pieces where 11 make the whole. In this case, you have five of pieces where six make the whole. In this case, you have seven of pieces that make the nine of them make the whole. Right? And what we've established in previous discussion is that a rectangle that is 5, 6 by 7 nights, the area of that rectangle, will be the product of 5, 6 and 7 nights. So we have this new fraction. Clearly it's a fraction, right? We've got some pieces and the whole thing's cut into pieces. Right? So how many pieces, let's say, make up the whole thing? How many pieces make up this whole area? 54, right? Six make the whole this way, and nine make the whole this way. If we were to draw that grid, right? Draw all those lines, all these lines like that, we can clearly see, oh, we don't have to count them, we can see six times nine, 54 pieces make up one whole square. It's the same shape Right, but this shows why, yeah. why it is. Right? Because we need to figure out how many pieces make the whole. This is what fractions are. They're communicating this to us. How many pieces make the whole? Six times nine of them. This one takes six pieces to make the whole. This one takes nine pieces to make the whole. Right? I cut it six ways, one way, and, and nine the other way, and I've got 54 things. Or 54 make the whole. Now, how many of those things do I have? Yeah, I have five this way and seven this way, so the number of things that I have are 35. I have 35 things. What are they? They're pieces of the whole. Pieces where 54 makes the whole thing. I think that's possible. Okay. Oh, you should. Five, six, ten. Somebody?
nobody ever asks you why do we multiply straight across, you don't have to tell them this, but that is a pretty handy way to show them why you multiply straight across. And what I hope to do is, is to make you more independent. And so when you go to multiply fractions and you think, should I cross multiply five times nine and six times seven? doesn't make any sense because what we're trying to do is figure out how many pieces we have and how many pieces make the whole. Five pieces is what I have and nine pieces make the whole. Multiplying those two together don't make any sense. But multiplying how many pieces I have and how many pieces I have should tell me how many pieces I have. Multiplying how many pieces it takes to make the whole and how many pieces it takes to make the whole should tell me how many pieces it takes to make the whole. Okay. Um, and if you, if you ever get confused, you can just kind of go back to this picture, whether you draw it or imagine it, and it can help you remember, this is how many pieces I have, this is how many pieces make the whole. Okay? In case you're one of those, and there's lots of people out there in the world who cross multiply when asked to multiply two fractions, let me show you why you're thinking of cross multiplying real quick, okay? And then we'll be done. Right? Cross multiplying is how you are remembering to solve an equation like this. 5 thirds equals x over 12. Cross multiplying is what you're remembering to do here. Cross, cross, okay. 3x equals 60. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. that, when you think cross multiply, that's why it's in your head. It's just this term cross multiply that's flying around your head and is the only time that it applies. It is not for multiplying fractions together, it's for solving when two fractions are equal to each other. And then when we divide, divide by 3, x equals 20. Okay, so 5 to 3 is the same as 20 to 12. And that's when you're supposed to use cross multiplication. All right? We will be done. Did we learn anything today? I certainly hope so. I really want to help you be independent.